Hi everyone, I hope you're all well and uh, are ready for this next Sunday School story. Um, let's have a think about where we are. So what book are we in? We're in the book of 1 Samuel. Who are we looking at? We're looking at David. We're at chapter 24 of the book. Now, who can remember what three stories we've already had in this book? Why don't you pause this video and try and write down those three stories we've had of David. So let's see which ones you got right. So we've got the first one. We've got David being anointed, having oil on his head by Samuel to show that God chose him to be the next king. And we saw that week that God's choice was good. OK, now second one, we have David and Goliath. When David went up against Goliath and God was with him and helped him defeat Goliath. And we saw that David's faith was strong that week now last week last time it wasn't last week it was last time what did we look at we looked at the third one we looked at how Saul was really angry and really jealous of David because people liked him more than Saul and we know that God has left Saul and because Saul sinned against him and God is with David so the third one is when Saul tries to get rid of David tries to kill David and he throws a javelin at him and then we had Jonathan, Saul's son, helping David out. OK, and we saw that week, OK, that God kept David safe. OK, so that's the three stories we've had so far. And this week, we're in chapter 24 at the next part of the story. So since David had to run away from, from Saul, um, he's been... Uh, running around all over the place through different towns and cities uh, and he took some men with him uh, okay and Saul has been pursuing him and trying to trying to find him to catch him let's see what happens in this next part of the story so we got up to the part where David was running away from Saul after he had seen Jonathan and Jonathan had confirmed that Saul wants to get rid of him. So David runs away uh, and finds a cave and he takes some men with him and they find this cave uh, to rest. So they hide in the cave. So that's David. Now Saul um, hears that David has run away and knows, uh, has some scouts out to see uh, where David had run off to. So Saul is on the run out, look out with his men looking for David. Now they come and see this cave uh, and Saul needs a bit of a rest. So Saul ends up going in to the cave exactly where David and his men were hiding. But because it was so dark in the cave Saul couldn't see any of David or his men but they could see they could see Saul. So he's having a rest in the cave. And one of one of David's men says to him, look, Saul's come. The God has given Saul into your hands. You can kill him. You can get rid of him and become king. But David instead goes up to Saul and cuts some of his robe off without him knowing, cuts a corner of his robe. Because he knows it would be wrong to kill Saul because God chose Saul to be king. So Saul, after his rest, goes out to join the rest of his men. But David is distressed and is worried that he even cut some of Saul's cloak. And he said that would be against God because God chose Saul. So he comes out and he shouts and Saul turns and sees David there. And David sees him and shows him the corner of cloak that he cut off. He said, look. Don't listen to the people who are telling you that I'm trying to kill you. David said, look, I have. I had the perfect opportunity to kill you in that cave, but I didn't. I don't want to kill you. OK, but I cut this corner of your cloak to show that I am not evil. I am not out to kill you. And Saul sees and is moved by what David says to him and sees that he has wronged David and says, I have treated you badly, yet you have spared my life. Now, 
Saul asked David to give him an oath, like a promise. And he said, you promise, because I know that one day God will make you king. Promise that you won't destroy any of my family. So David promises that when he becomes king, he won't destroy any of his family. And Saul goes off uh, back home. But David doesn't follow him. Because even though Saul um, made him made an oath and said sorry for what he'd done, he still didn't trust that Saul wouldn't try to kill him in the future. Because remember, God has left Saul. Even though God chose him at the beginning, he's left Saul. And God is with David. So, even though David will only become king when Saul's died, David doesn't try to get rid of Saul beforehand. He knows that it'd be wrong to try and get rid of Saul um, without God. Because he knows that God has promised to make David king. And instead of David's timing, it's God's timing. David trusted in God's timing. Let's do that together. David trusted in God's timing. He trusted in God's timing that one day he'll become king. And he didn't try by his own means to do it himself. Because getting rid of Saul would have made him king. He didn't take it into his own hands. He was trusting in God, even though Saul has been out to kill him. God promises us lots of things in the Bible as well, doesn't he? But we know that we have to trust in his timing for all the things that he's promised. We don't know when lots of the promises will happen, particularly the one that says Jesus will come back again. We don't know when that's going to happen. God doesn't tell us. But we have to trust in God's good timing that he will do it at the right time, at a good time. And even though we want him to come back now and, and uh, heal this world and, and make the new perfect world for us, we have to trust that when he does, it will be the best time, the perfect timing. So David trusted in God's timing and we need to trust in God's timing too, because we know it will be good and perfect. So let's pray to help us. Uh, to ask God to help us to trust him, even when everything around us uh, is going wrong. To trust him and he's good timing. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you so much for David and for his trust in you. That even though he could have got rid of Saul, he didn't because he was trusting you in your good timing. Help us to trust you in this day, in your good timing, uh, for all the promises that you give us in the Bible and for the promise of sending Jesus again. Help us to trust you and know that when that happens, it will be the right time. Amen. I hope you all enjoyed our story today. Have a really good Sunday and I'll see you next week. Bye.